Hi you guys, so today I wanna to talk about a question that was posted about legumes and whole grains and why are we not eating them on the meal plan and why does the paleo lifestyle not really support them? So I have, I kinda of jumped all in on paleo, okay? They consider th these two food groups kind of like, um, like a gray area. And they're a gray area because if they're prepared properly, they're, they will say okay with within a moder with moderation. If they're not prepared properly, it's no. It's no. So let me talk about that. So traditional cultures, way back when, we've been eating whole grains and legumes for, for a really long time. You guys, they had more time on their hands. They were bored. <laughs> We, we aren't bored anymore. We don't have any time. They sprouted. They soaked. They fermented. They pounded these grains and legumes. I'm so curious how they knew, knew how to do all this, but they did, and they were able to eat them, and they were part of their healthy diet. These people were amazingly healthy, okay? before And this is before sugar was ever in, introduced. They were amazingly healthy. In today's fast-paced world, we don't take the time to prepare them properly, and that is the problem. If you can prepare them properly by heating them, by pressure cooking, um, by pressure cooking, by soaking, by fermenting, I don't have any arguments. It, my only argument would be then, not an argument, but my only stipulation would be they can't be a main part of your diet, and here's why. They do not have a lot of nutrients. No matter how you prepare them, they do not have a lot of nutrients. They have some, but they are not nearly as high as the stuff that um, a paleo lifestyle uh, recommends. And of course, we I'm, I'm talking as well, always quality, buying quality fruits and vegetables and meats, herbs and spices, um, wild caught fish and shellfish. Those have so many more nutrients in them than whole grains and legumes. There's not a lot of substance to it that help to nourish our body. And I'm all about nourishing our body. That is why, that is why. You guys, we have a huge um, nutrient depletion problem <laughs> in our country. We are not getting nutrients like we need to. I, uh, I've been testing people for, with my nutritional therapy. I actually have a hands-on approach and I've got some minerals that I can test. Oh my gosh, they're almost always completely depleted in people. Um, we need nourishing foods that have lots of nutrients. So I urge you to spend more time on those than worrying about these grains and legumes that, that you know, if they're prepared properly, I'm not saying they're doing anything wrong to you. They're just not doing anything for you. Does that make sense too, I hope? Um, I want food that's doing something for me, okay? So I wanna also say, I just need to read something so I don't forget, I made some notes here. If you have any gut problems already, you absolutely need to stay away from legumes and whole grains. Even properly re prepared, they're not gonna do anything for your body that is helpful for nourishing your gut and your gut needs to be healed. If you have an autoimmune con condition, which I do right now, I can't eat any of this for sure. I wasn't eating it before, but again, it has the potential to cause inflammation. And I read this, one in six Americans now has an autoimmune condition. And there's a lot of people who have what I have, Hashimoto's, that don't even know it. So, there's so many people walking around that don't even know it, and they're still eating this stuff and they're causing more trouble. So, something to think about. Again, without properly preparing them. Um, and then, you guys, those are the two main reasons why you absolutely have to stay away from them. But then the other reason was what I said earlier, was that nutrient density issue. There's just not a lot there. I, um, I feel really, really strongly about trying to eliminate them for like a reset plan for yourself, like 30 days, eliminate them. I'm talking quinoa, I'm talking rice, um, I'm talking brown rice, I'm talking wheat and oatmeal, you know, the things that we tend to gravitate towards because they're comfort foods. I'm talking eliminate all, all of them, all of them, 30 days, maybe longer. And then you slowly reintroduce them one by one 
to see how do you feel in those 30 days? Do you feel better? Be true to yourself. Do you feel better without those in your diet? And when you introduce them, you introduce them like it for three days all by themselves. So you, you eat oats for three days and then or if right away you have problems, you stop eating them, right? But you give it three days, and if you have no problems in three days, okay, oats are probably okay for you. Then we go on to rice. You introduce it for three days. You're, you're, and so on and so on. You slowly reintroduce and see which ones might give you issues. Hopefully none. I mean, there are people out there that have no issues. Again, properly preparing them, you're gonna do a lot better. With, um, with eliminating issues, but then it comes back to that anti-nutrient. You know, for me, you just can't win. You can't win. And let me say, if you choose to eat them, if you choose to eat them, um, please keep them as a little side dish. They are not the main part of your meal, so no more, no more oatmeal for breakfast. You could pressure cook oatmeal. That would be better. That would be better to pressure cook it, but it can't be your breakfast every single morning. It can't be your breakfast. There's not any nutrients in there, okay? Even if you're doing it the right way, you're still not getting quality nutrients that your body needs. You gotta have this really real food that we grow in our gardens. Um, I know legumes we grow, so there we go. You can, <laughs> but you know what I'm talking about. The green, deep, leafy vegetables, the tubers, the quality, pasture-raised meats and the shell, the wild-caught shellfish, those are the things that should make up all of our meals. And you are gonna be on a much better pathway to getting the nutrients that your body needs and, and that will nourish your body. I read this, um, listen to this one, and then I'm gonna end. When we're not willing to prepare our foods, our, our foods properly, we end up eating a diet high in unprepared grains, low in nutrients, and high in anti-nutrients, which means they do nothing good for your body but cause problems and inflammation, our health will suffer dramatically. That's how I feel, okay? Let's have a discussion about it. This is your decision to make, but no matter what you do, keep it minimal. Keep these kind of foods minimal, okay? I can help you with substitutions. That's what I'm here for. That's what I'm here for. All right, you guys, have a good day. Bye-bye.